He is a household name, an artist who painted seven days a week for most of his life, creating nearly 4,000 pictures, 800 magazine covers, and ads for more than 150 companies. He was honored with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. In 2006, his painting, Breaking Home Ties, was auctioned off for $15.4 million. Norman Percival Rockwell was born in New York City in 1894. At the early age of four, Rockwell began sketching the characters from books by Charles Dickens that his father would read to the family each night. By the time he was 12, he knew he wanted to be an artist. Rockwell quit high school after his sophomore year so he would have more time to take art classes. He attended the National Academy of Design and then the Art Students League. After three years, his art teacher felt he was ready for an illustrating job. He received a couple of assignments and then the editor of Boy's Life, a new Boy Scout magazine, asked him to illustrate a handbook on camping. It was the start of a lifelong association with scouting. He began illustrating stories for the magazine and soon was asked to become the magazine's art director at a monthly salary of $50. Every month, he painted the cover and illustrated one story. Over the next 60 years, Rockwell would paint the cover for almost every Boy Scout calendar. Most of the pieces he did were of children. He used neighborhood boys and girls as his models and paid them 50 cents an hour. Now, it was not easy for a child to pose for the length of time that Rockwell needed them to, so he would place a stack of nickels on a table. After 25 minutes, Rockwell would put five nickels in a new stack to show the child what he or she had earned so far. In this picture, The Shiner, Rockwell's model was Mary, the 10-year-old daughter of his lawyer. In trying to furnish her with a black eye, he tried brushing charcoal over her eye. But a bruise is composed of many colors, and the charcoal didn't fit the bill. So Rockwell began a search at area hospitals for anyone with a black eye. He ended up with a two-and-a-half-year-old who had fallen down a flight of stairs. The desired results were achieved when Rockwell painted a bruise onto Mary's face. Despite his success, Rockwell longed to draw a cover for the Saturday Evening Post, who in those days was the greatest show window in America for an illustrator. So Norman took two of his paintings and several sketches and went to Philadelphia where the Saturday Evening Post offices were located. The editors liked his work and they bought the two paintings, a sketch idea, and wanted three additional covers as well. Rockwell received $75 for each. Needless to say, he was elated. Rockwell's first cover for the magazine appeared on the May 20th, 1916 edition. It was Boy with a Carriage. Rockwell was just 22 years old. The next year, Rockwell's first attempt to join the Navy during World War I was not met with success. At six feet tall and 140 pounds, he was eight pounds underweight. So he gorged himself, and the next day he made the weight requirement. He was given the role of military artist, and so he saw no action in the war. Instead, he drew portraits of the men to send back home to their families. After the war, he continued to do post covers, but he now is also illustrating advertising copy for products such as Jell-O and Fisk bicycle tires, as well as painting ads for toothpaste, cereal, soda, and cough medicine. For 55 years, Norman Rockwell painted an average of seven covers a year for a total of 332 covers for the Saturday Evening Post. All of his covers told an emotional and universal story about the way Americans lived. Although he drew attention to details, no one part of his images dominated the whole. Nothing was incidental. Every brushstroke served the narrative. It was his talent for storytelling, 
for seeing the deeper meaning in the everyday, as well as in the extraordinary, combined with his abilities as an artist that made him the consummate cover artist, which resulted in the Post selling more magazines when one of Rockwell's illustrations was on the cover, such as this one, entitled The Soda Jerk. Since Rockwell's son Peter had worked as a soda jerk, he used him as the model for the boy behind the counter. Early in his career, he used only live models. He resisted using photography as a tool in composition, but then he began to notice that his pictures were all done from the same angles because he always drew from his easel. So in the mid-1930s, he tried photography. He would set up the scene and have a photographer take 50 to 100 shots, as Norman would carefully document all the little details of the scene, such as the fold of a cuff on a man's trousers, or a hand grasping the back of a chair. For these photographs, Norman collected props and costumes for his models. He would buy a piece of clothing from a stranger if it had the well-worn look he wanted. If it were an action shot, Rockwell would use blocks or books to support a model's foot at just the right angle for running or walking. Here are several examples of Rockwell setting up a shot. Rockwell would select the photographs he liked best, do a full-sized charcoal drawing, then transfer that to a canvas where he would use oil paints for the picture. It would then take a few days to a few weeks to complete. It made a tremendous difference for him, enhancing his vision and memory. Here we have an example of one of Rockwell's working photographs alongside the finished product, entitled the Runaway. Rockwell was very patriotic, and he wanted to help America by using his art to make people feel better during World War II. In 1942, while visiting the War Department, he was told that the agency wanted a series of posters on the Four Freedoms, a wartime variation of the Bill of Rights that had been laid out by President Roosevelt in a speech before Congress. After rendering a charcoal drawing of each of the freedoms, Rockwell took his drawings to the Office of War Information, but he was rebuffed. As fortune would have it, Rockwell was next on his way to a meeting with the Saturday Evening Post, and they wanted his renditions of the four freedoms for the magazine. They were freedom of speech, freedom of worship, freedom from fear, and freedom from want. It took Rockwell seven exhausting months to create these four paintings, which some see as the crowning achievement of his career. Each shows the way the average American lives out the freedom and collectively the four paintings are called the Four Freedoms. The paintings were published in the Post in four consecutive issues and were a huge sensation. They tapped into a world that seemed recognizable and real. When the Office of War Information saw how popular they were, they agreed to print 2.5 million poster images of them. The Treasury Department, in conjunction with the Post, put together a traveling war bond sales campaign with the four original paintings as the centerpiece. This resulted in a very successful campaign with more than $132 million worth of bonds being sold. Rockwell's cook modeled for the grandmother in this picture, and the turkey was the Rockwell family's Thanksgiving dinner. Rockwell said that it was the first time he consumed one of his models. Soon after submitting the paintings to the post, Rockwell was awakened in the middle of the night by one of his sons. He had seen flames leaping out of Rockwell's studio. The converted barn burned down, leaving only the chimney standing. Rockwell lost about 30 original artworks, hundreds of preparatory sketches, some 200 costumes and props, along with brushes, paints, and other equipment. A few days after the fire, 
Rockwell made a humorous vignette of drawings depicting the unfortunate event, called My Studio Burns. Throughout the years, readers often sent in suggestions for covers, of which Rockwell used four. One of those ended up being voted the favorite cover by the Post's readers. It was this one, entitled Saying Grace. Norman Rockwell claimed his best ideas came from his own experiences, and he would let an idea germinate for as long as necessary. For instance, he mulled over the gossips for more than 20 years before finally figuring out the humorous ending in which the scandalous tidbit circles back to the original busybody. Rockwell used his neighbors as his models for this picture. And because he did not want them to think that he was making fun of them, he included himself and his wife Mary in the picture. In 1963, the Saturday Evening Post decided to reinvent itself. The new editorial team was updating the magazine's look, which resulted in a decision to use less illustrated covers. Rockwell was being asked to produce portraits of politicians and statesmen to accompany the feature articles. The covers of the magazine were now color photographs of celebrities instead of Rockwell drawings. After much agonizing, Rockwell severed ties with the Post. Though he painted his last cover for the Post in May, seven months later, on December 19, 1963, this Rockwell painting of President John F. Kennedy appeared on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post memorial issue in honor of the slain president. This portrait had originally graced the cover of the magazine three years previously. At the age of 69, Rockwell could have retired. But starting at the beginning of 1964, he began illustrating for Look magazine. There he was able to depict the broader cultural issues that he could not at the Saturday Evening Post. His assignments for the magazine represented a radical change for him. He went from doing gently humorous paintings about everyday moments to unsettling images of the world and its woes. This was a turning point for the artist as well as American art. With his new work, he pushed his art in surprising directions and risked alienating a public that had long turned to him for humor and diversion. Now he had to cultivate a new audience in a new venue. Rockwell was a sensitive storyteller, focusing on the individual, as can be seen in his first illustration for Look, The Problem We All Live With. It portrays a little girl being escorted to a newly integrated school and was based on photographs of Ruby Bridges, the first African American to attend an all white school in New Orleans as a result of court-ordered desegregation. During the last decade of his life, Rockwell was still hard at work, but frail health kept him from producing much art. It was during this time that he set up a trust, leaving many paintings, as well as a studio and personal archives, to what would become the Norman Rockwell Museum at Stockbridge. Norman Rockwell's last magazine cover was July 1976. He painted himself wrapping a ribbon around the Liberty Bell. He died two years later, on November 8, 1978, at the age of 84. Rockwell was one of the most successful visual mass communicators of the century. Anyone can relate a good tale, but a good storyteller is rare. Rockwell used paint instead of words to create his narratives, which offered a wide range of characters and situations. This masterpiece, entitled Coming and Going, is a before and after depiction of a family outing. In the top panel, you see a buoyant clan starting off on a trip. In the bottom panel, the same seven people reappear sitting in basically the same seats, but facing the opposite direction, heading home, their faces drooping with fatigue.
This remains one of Rockwell's most famous paintings, and his new Cocker Spaniel appeared in this painting. Rockwell's career spanned one of the most eventful periods in American history. His images conveyed our human shortcomings, as well as our national ideals of freedom, democracy, equality, tolerance, and common decency in ways that anybody could understand. Rockwell's paintings powerfully portrayed the universal truths, aspirations, and foibles of humanity. His work is part of the fabric of America, and at its best, it reflects our most fundamental belief about who we are as a people. This is the only painting in which all five members of the Rockwell family appear. His son Jarvis is the newly arrived homecomer, and Rockwell's wife Mary is the mother welcoming home her son. Norman Rockwell himself is easy to spot near the center of the painting with his pipe. Rockwell actually appeared in several of his paintings, like this one entitled, Norman Rockwell Visits a Country Editor. In celebrating the ordinary, Rockwell focused on the elusive, commonplace moments, the mundane experiences that he elevated to levels of greater significance, as depicted here in The Doctor and the Doll. I remember as a young child seeing a copy of this painting on my doctor's office wall. Rockwell honored the American spirit by creating images that communicated patriotism and unquestioned allegiance to the United States. His stories promoted American values such as industriousness, fair play, and decency. His work touches chords of emotional response, a reminder of an earlier time when life was simpler and better, a time when we cared about our country, our family, and the neighbor down the street. Here is my personal favorite Rockwell painting, The Discovery. You can see Norman Rockwell's work at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the Brooklyn Museum, at the National Boy Scout Museum in Irving, Texas, and the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, among others. Here is a fun work of Rockwell's entitled Triple Self Portrait. An exhibit of Rockwell's work was displayed at the Dayton Art Institute in 2011. At the exhibit, visitors had the opportunity to create their own Saturday Evening Post cover. Here is mine. Here is a quote by Norman Rockwell. Commonplaces never become tiresome. It is we who become tired. When we cease to be curious and appreciative, we find that it is not a new scene which is needed, but a new viewpoint.